Good morning, church. Welcome to Anthem in the House. This is Pastor Nate and my wife Allison here, and we're so glad you're joining us today for our Sunday morning service. I hope that you were able to find it uh, easily online on our webpage or YouTube or Instagram, and I hope that you're in your house, you're uh, on your couch, you have your friends over. Wait, wait, not your friends, just your family over, and uh, that you're just uh, tuning into this time. We believe God has something very special for us today. But we wanted to begin with a few announcements, let you guys know what's happening in the life of our church. Yeah, we're super excited about what God has revealed for you as Anthem Chapel for this upcoming season of COVID-19. And I want to let you know that on behalf of the staff and the elders and the leaders of Anthem Chapel, we have spent an amazing week seeking the Lord for what He has and what this means for our church body and how to go forward and do ministry in such a time as this. And so this upcoming season that we are in as a church body, we are calling Anthem in the House. Yeah. And through that ministry um, as a church, we have broken it down into a few specific things and we'll change it weekly, but um, we know that we are each living for today and not for <laughs> tomorrow. And so we're gonna look at what we have coming up in just this next week. Mm -hmm. And so a few things we have, um, the first is starting, we're calling it Pray to Start Your Day, because yeah. we all know Nate loves I mean, rhyming. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual gift, guys, okay? And so we're calling it Pray to Start Your Day. And so Pastor Nate and Pastor Lars have asked a few specific individuals to write a devotion for each day this week. So every morning at 7.30, that will be launched out to you as the church body. It'll be on social media and in your email. And it will be a specific prayer request that you can pray through for mm -hmm. that day. So for Monday and for Tuesday and for Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And so we're super excited about that. It's going to keep us grounded in the word mm -hmm. and in prayer and on our knees for the season the Lord has us in. And the second thing that we have going on is worship. And so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night at 8 o'clock p.m., we're going to go live with a few worship leaders from mm -hmm. our church that are just um, going to usher us into the throne room. You can turn that on in the background. You, should, you can worship alongside them um, on your couch. And what that is going to do is just inhabit the praises of our king among our home mm -hmm. and so we pray that that would just be a sweet time that your um, home is filled with the presence of the lord that his worship is just resounding among your walls yeah, and we're super excited about that so those are the two main things that we have coming this upcoming week our prayer meeting that we always have Tuesday night mm -hmm. at 7.30 or 6.30 p.m. will still be going on. We're going to do a Zoom conference call. Yep. And so it's been amazing, the technology that the Lord's given us for this season. So if you don't have Zoom, we'll be doing that after service today as well. But get that set up and you can join us after service. And then also Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., Pastor Nate and Pastor Lars will be um, leading that prayer meeting through a Zoom conference call. Yeah. So God is doing sweet and mighty things. Um, it's been an interesting week praying through what he has for us and for the church body. Yeah. But we love you guys. Yeah. Praying for you moms. And um, <laughs> I could cry. I it's, it's a season. But. but we love you guys so much. want to say thank you for your generosity. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, we uh, sent out, uh, made a special offering for Hope Refuge, and hopefully hopefully this week, we, uh, we got the funds, and we're going to be putting those HVAC systems up, uh, hopefully this week. Uh, so thank you so much for that. I want to remind you, you're welcome to, to give online at anthemchapel.com slash give, or also text to give as well. Appreciate your generosity. I look forward to some more fun things happening with our Anthem World Kids Ministry. We're thinking about some stuff next week as well, Spring Break Challenge, and those things. Things. So be on the lookout for more exciting things. Well, listen, I thought it'd be important for us to try to do some worship together. We asked our worship leaders to record themselves uh, leading us in worship. So uh, we're going to give that a shot. So uh, let me pray for us and we'll enter into a time of worship. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this interesting season you've put us in. We believe that even though we are individually kind of isolated, if you will, in our homes, uh, there's something that unifies us, and that is uh, worship. That is your word. That is um, uh, just seeking your presence. So as we worship, as we come before you, would you just fill each home with your presence? Looking forward to spending a few moments with you and we, with each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. Love you guys. Hey guys. Will here. Um, I'm in my kitchen. 
and it's got really good acoustics. So uh, here we go.
I think it's so important to just sit at the feet of Jesus during this season. Um, I hope that your house is filled with worship music right now, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would just rain down in your place. Um, I'm praying that for you. What a great time that was to worship together. Well, listen, turn into your Bibles to Psalm chapter 50. Seven, Psalm 57. We're going to take a little detour, uh, take a, a moment away from our sermon on the move to do something I really felt uh, was on my heart to, to do for this Sunday in particular. Uh, this psalm, I think, is going to speak to your heart. It's been speaking in my heart this whole week. As you're turning there, I want to let you know that we have our YouVersion study notes online. You can go to the YouVersion Bible app, go to the More tab, then go to the events, and you'll find Anthem Chapel study notes right there. You can follow along. Also, as you're turning there, Psalm 57, I want to remind you of why we're calling this season in the life of our church Anthem in the House for two different reasons. Number one, we're going to continue to provide a Sunday morning service online. It's important that we stay in the Word together. And remember that today, after this message, maybe around 1030, we're going to have a Zoom meeting time. So hopefully you received that link on your email or you can find it online. After this message, you're going to be uh, joining us for that if, if you so desire. But secondly, again, Anthem in the House means this. We want to be in the house. We want to be present and available for you. Not less available, but more available. So we want to be reaching out to you through text messages, through phone calls. Um, you reach out to us with any needs or concerns or cares or, or anxious thoughts, anything in any way. We want to be in the house for you. So listen, looking forward. to The title of today's message is Cave uh, Chorus. A cave chorus, or more importantly, how to behave in a cave. All right, let's check it out. Um, psalm 57, here we go, a psalm of David. And I want us to begin in the, in the uh, prescript. Look at what it says. Psalm 57, prayer for safety from enemies. To the chief musician set to do not destroy a victim of David when he fled from Saul into the cave. All right, look at that, verse 1. Be, ver be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For my soul trust in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They've dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it, they themselves have fallen. Selah. Verse 7. This is getting good. My heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens and your truth unto the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above, among, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Oh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this moment together. We pray that although we're gathered kind of separately all across our community, all across our city, uh, we believe we can be unified. We believe your spirit speaks individually to hearts, and I believe it's going to speak to hearts today. So would you have your way with us this morning? We love you. We serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, um, how to behave in a cave. Um, I don't know about you, but maybe you've been feeling like you've been in a cave lately. Did you notice where David wrote this psalm? Again, look at the prescript in chapter 57. Right underneath that, it says this, that uh, this was a mictum, a style of psalm from David, uh, when he fled from Saul into the cave. He's in a cave when David wrote this. You might remember that David, as a teenager, was anointed to be king. And then a little bit later, David, as a teenager, uh, kills Goliath, and he begins to make a name for himself. 
And you remember the top 10 hit in Israel at that time was Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. David began to have a, a bigger and greater name for himself, and Saul didn't like that. And for a decade or more, David and Saul would have this really troublesome relationship. And we find ourselves, as, as David wrote Psalm 57, we must have been in a season of trouble and trial, trying to hide out from Saul. And he goes to a familiar place, a cave. Uh, he's isolated, he's alone, he's in the dark, he's in a cave. Now, as I was thinking about our past week, maybe you felt a little bit like David, like you've been in a cave. Uh, maybe you're even watching this sermon from a man cave, <laughs> a little jealous for that. But uh, we think about that. We've been isolated. We've been in, uh, uh, alone and um, in the same spot, unsure and, and weary of what is going on. We've been in a physical cave, our homes. Uh, you're probably thinking, man, I got to get out of this place. I, I'm getting bored. I'm getting this crazy. Can you imagine not having Wi-Fi right now? Oh, my goodness. But maybe also you have been maybe in an emotional cave. Uh, anxiousness and worry has been gripping you. And um, I believe as we think about this psalm and think about what David was going through, how was he able to behave in the way that he did while he was in a cave? And I want to look at three different things. And you know how I love little things. We're going to look at the, um, the ABCs of how to behave in a cave. We're going to know first that we need to be aware of the real refuge that we have. B, we need to believe that God is in control. And C, we need to let our celebration be a demonstration. All right, this is good stuff. Now remember, I do like a little holler back, but uh, I can't hear you, so whenever you want to, you can say, amen, preach it, amen. All right, so here we go. This first idea is we need to be aware of our real refuge. Now, notice verse one, what we see. It says this, uh, be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Now, watch the text here. Do you see what it says there in verse 1? It says the word refuge. So refuge, I want to see it as two different things. First, it's a place. Um, David's in a cave. <laughs> it's a literal place of refuge. He's in a real cave, and it's dark, and he's by himself, and does he have a candle, and does he, does, you know, how, is there a restroom there? What's, what's going on? He has a place of shelter. He's hiding from Saul. Um, he's a place of protection. And again, this past week, we've been asked to shelter in place. Our homes have quite literally been places of refuge for us. So we understand that. We understand that. A place of comfort, a place of protection, a place of shelter. But refuge is not just a place. What I want us to see here, it's a person. Watch the text. Look at verse 1. Here's David. He says this, the last little part. He says, And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge. So the place of refuge is a cave, but his person of refuge is Almighty God. Do you see that there? In the shadow of your wings, I'll make my refuge. David was in a cave, but his soul was trusting in the Lord. This picture of God uh, protecting us in his wings, we see all throughout Scripture. In fact, David would say this again. Write this in the margin of your Bibles, Psalm 17 and verse 8. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 91 and verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. David was aware that his real refuge, his real refuge, was not the cave he was hiding in, but the person he was trusting in. Oh, friends, that, that's a good word for us today. A sense, he really sensed that God had wrapped him in the fold of his wings, and that was his true shelter and refuge. Now, I believe when we begin to become aware of who our real refuge is, two effects will happen. First, it produces a faithful heart. Did you see that in verse, um, uh, verse 1? He says, Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me, for my soul trust in you. For my soul trust in you. When God is your true refuge, your hiding place, your shelter, your comfort, 
It means that you're trusting him to see you through all circumstances. Do you see that also in verse 1, what he says there? Until these calamities have passed by. It's almost as though David is in this cave, a place of refuge, but he's trusting in the person of refuge so all the, till all these calamities pass by. It's almost as though he's sitting in the mouth of this cave and all this hectic, chaotic things are happening outside. And he is just trusting in his Lord, his God, his Savior, until all these things pass by. That's real refuge. So the question I have for you, and as I ask myself, in this past week, where did you run? What refuge did you run into? In a sense, what was the cave you sought shelter into? Now, um, maybe for one, this is kind of a funny one, but we've been talking about we're supposed to shelter in place to flatten the curve, but I've been sheltering in place and I'm just fattening up my curves, you know, like I'm finding some refuge just in like snacks everywhere. I'm just can't, I'm just can't, it's like an insatiable hunger. I'm always wanting to snack on something while I'm here at my house. Uh, but on a more uh, serious note, you know, what are the things that you've been running into this past week? Maybe there's been relationships that are a little bit toxic but you've run back into them just as a sense of refuge. Maybe there's a community that you shouldn't have been a part of, but you're running back into just because it's a sense of comfort. Not to say that all relationships and communities are bad, but they're not great refuges. Maybe this past week you've been running to the refuge of your career and been thinking about that and with the stock markets and and finances and all those things, maybe that's been something that you're just trying to kind of find refuge in perhaps. Maybe there's been a certain substance that you're trying to find refuge in. Or maybe a hobby. Friends, anything other than Christ is a bad cave to hide in. Anything other than Christ will always fall short of a true shelter and comfort for us, my friends. Again, I'm reminded of Proverbs uh, uh, chapter 18 and verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they're saved. Oh, friends, where did you run this past week? For David, in times of trouble, in times where he needed protection, he knew there was only one person he could find true refuge and shelter in, and that was his God. Friends, I hope that that's producing a faithful heart to trust God with all of your life. Not only does a finding and being aware of um, a real refuge Uh, give you a faithful heart. It gives us a fixed heart. Look at verse 7. This is so amazing. Verse 7 of uh, Psalm 57. It says, David says this, my heart is steadfast. Oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. So because David's real refuge was God, He was able to say two times right in a row, my heart is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. Now notice the word steadfast there. It means to be uh, fixed. It means to be established. It means to be settled, settled and steady. So think about this, this past week. Has it been easy to have a fixed heart? Have you had a steady heart this past week? Or has it been up and down and all over? Has it been every time that you've read the news about the coronavirus and things shutting down and and all the new things happening, more cases in Santa Barbara, has your heart flittered and fluttered and risen up and, and gone down and up and down? Friends, when God is our true refuge, the an effect that we should have is a fixed heart, a heart that's steady and stable. Because again, we're trusting that God has everything in control. Every day we're getting new information, you know. Uh, we're hearing Costco is two hours to get into Costco, or, or there's no more toilet paper, there's no more flour. My wife loves making bread. No more flour anywhere, we can't find it. Uh, what if, you know, Disney Plus and Netflix are increasing their monthly rates? Oh, what's going to happen? No. Um, you know, but even, even in the cave, David was able to say, My heart's fixed, I'm established. I can be settled, I can be steady, I can be secure, because I know who my true shelter is. Oh, what a great behavior to have in the cave. Secondly, I wanted you to see this. So we need to be aware of who our real refuge is, not just a place, but a person. 
Secondly, we need to believe, believe that God is in control. Look at verse 2. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. Now watch the text there. Look at the last little part. To God who performs all things for me. So listen to this. Think about this. God who performs all things for me. David doesn't view life in the cave as though all these things, as though something is happening to him. But David sees this as something God is doing for him. Now, do you see the difference? Let me, let me repeat it. David doesn't see this life in the cave as though some, this is something God is doing to him, but as though something God is doing for him. All right? David is not a victim of circumstance, but he's a vessel that God is cultivating and grooming. You see, he believed that God was in control, that God loved him so much, that God had a wonderful plan for him, that God had anointed him to be the next king of Israel. And he was able, even though he's in a cave and it was chaotic and it was a trial and it was trouble, he was able to say, no, 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 God, you're performing all these things for me. Hmm. It's almost as though David was praying Romans 8, 28, before Romans 8, 28 was even written. Do you guys know that verse? Say it after me. Um, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who were called according to his purpose. Listen, friends, you know you've heard me say this before. God is always up to something good. And if it ain't good, he's not done. I believe that, my friends. I believe it with all my heart. You see, in the dark, it's God developing In the dark times, God is developing you. He's molding you. He's shaping you. Do you remember the example of the seed last week? We talked about the seed. A seed has to be underground, covered up in a dark spot for it to reach its full potential. David understood this. He wasn't being buried in a cave. He was being planted. God was going to develop something in him in this dark spot. In the cave, David would continue to become the next king of Israel. In the cave, in the dark, David would be developed to become a man after God's own heart. You see, friends, our trials often pave the way for our greatest triumphs. So let me ask you, what is God developing in you this week, this past week, the future What does God want to develop in you during this dark time in a cave? Patience. I mean, if you're a parent, is not patience being developed in you with your kids in your house? Some of you chose homeschool. I didn't choose homeschool. Homeschool is being forced upon me. It is growing patience. God's developing patience in me. But on a lighter note, even on a different note, how about just a greater love for your family? Sitting down at, at meal times and just sharing life and, and everything is a little bit slower. We're developing. God's doing something in us. No more sports. There's no more things going on. It's just like family time. How about your marriage? Is God developing something in your marriage during this season? Is there a greater intimacy, communication? I mean, wow, what is God developing in you during this season? Oh, friends, that's exciting to me. I want to ask you, is God revealing something to you? Is he refining something in you? Is he renewing something for you? Those are some good questions to ask. We need to believe that God is greater than our circumstances around us, right? Our Christ is greater than our circumstances. Verse 2, I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me good behavior to have in a cave. Aware of who our real refuge is, we believe that God is in control. Lastly, our celebration is a demonstration. Look at verse 9, what David's able to say. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. So, So listen, David's in a cave. But he could picture himself surrounded by people in the nation just praising 
his God, lifting a voice, shouting out to his king. Listen, friends, during this moment right now, people are watching you. They're watching you. And they're wondering, is the faith this person talks about all the time, is this faith real? Is this something they really, is this, this life within, is it living out that? Is that really matching up? People are watching and they're wondering. I think David, people were wondering, okay, David, you talk about all this. Are you really believing that God's going to still protect you and, and keep you and, 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 and put you to be the next king? And David's saying, listen, huh, I will continue to praise him. Amongst the people in front of the nations, I will praise and worship my God. Friends, celebration is a demonstration. It lets people know whose team you're on. Now, before this all happened, remember we had this thing called sports, and uh, we would go to the park, and we'd see our kids practice, and baseball season was just happening, and my son was playing baseball, and he's a pitcher, one of the pitchers. He's a left-handed, uh, left-handed person, so he was, the coach wanted him to pitch, and uh, the last game that we actually had before this all went down, uh, our team was playing this opposing team, and on the opposing team, there were some families from Anthem Chapel. Well, here's my son on the pitching mound, and here's another kid from Anthem Chapel up at bat. Now, my friends, who am I going to cheer for? Well, of course I'm going to cheer for my son. And when a strike came, I'm like, yeah, woohoo, you know, strike that kid out. Now, on a Sunday morning, I'm going to give that kid some Starbursts. I'm going to love him. But right now, my celebration was a demonstration of whose team I'm cheering for. Friends, it's the same way for you. As you begin to worship, as you begin to allow your home to just be filled with worship, it lets the world know, hey, this is the team that I'm on. <laughs> my celebration is a demonstration that I believe my God is bigger than the circumstances. I do believe that my God is greater and he's going to see me through to the end. Our celebration is a demonstration. I love that. May we be, during this season, a people of praise. Notice how David talks about rejoicing throughout this psalm. Verse 2, I cry out to God most high. Verse 7, I will sing and, and give praise. Verse 8, awake my glory, awake lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. He's like, get my guitar, get my lute. I am ready to worship. Dem a celebration is a demonstration. Oh, friends, remember we talked about this before. Not only does worship just let people know whose team we're on. But praise pushes our problems into the proper perspective. Praise pushes our problems into the proper perspective. I've done this with you before, but let's do it again together. Uh, take your hand, and if you put it right in front of your face, all you see is your hand. A lot of times, that's how we see our circumstances, our problems, our trials. We just see them right in front of our face. But as you begin to praise God, it pushes our problems out into the proper perspective. And this is what David is doing. He could have been saying, oh, I'm in a cave. I'm hiding from Saul. This is all I see. I was known a king. I killed Goliath. But he doesn't. He says, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you be exalted. Oh, God, you're here in heaven. Oh, God, you're in control. And as he began to praise, it pushed his problem into the proper perspective perspective. And when you hold your hand out here, all of a sudden the problem that was so big and so mighty and such a mountain, it gets put in the proper place. And now I see everything in this proper perspective. Oh friends, during this season, may we be a people of praise. God, you're exalted. God, you're in control. God, you're above the heavens. God, let your glory uh, just fill the earth. Oh, friends, let that be us. I mentioned a song last week that was ministering to my heart, a song by Elevation called Graves in the Gardens. I talked to many of you, you know, digitally talking, uh, about how that song ministered to your hearts. Another song I want to let you know about that's been ministering to me, it was released just a little bit ago by Bethel, and uh, it's called We Praise You. We Praise You. It is such a great song. Here's some of the lyrics. It says, let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. 
We sing your name in the dark, and it changes everything. We sing with all we are, and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. And then there's a chorus that's repeated over and over, and it goes like this. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. Oh, friends, my challenge to you, the faith family of Anthem Chapel, is that we would be a people of praise, that our posture would be able to say, this is what living looks like. We worship our King. Our Christ is greater than the circumstances around us. My heart is a faithful heart. I trust in the Lord. My heart is a fixed heart. It is established. It is settled upon the rock of Jesus Christ. I'm aware of who my real refuge is. I believe God is in control, and my celebration will be a demonstration to all around of whose team I am on. Oh, friends, what a great word for us this morning. Maybe I want to just close with just challenge. Um, It's easy for us during this time to be lazy, to just relax and, and, and let go. But I want to challenge you, instead of being lazy, let's lean in. Let's lean in to scripture. Let's lean in to worship. Let's lean in to prayer. Let's lean in to greater intimacy with our Lord. Remember what we believe God gave us this year, 2020, deep roots bearing fruit? Oh, friends, how about now? A lot of time on our hand, a lot of time with family. Oh, a lot of time to, some cult, to do some cultivating of some deep roots, bearing fruit. Let's not be lazy. Let's lean in. Also, I want to challenge you. It's easy to, to sit and stare at social. But instead, could we stand and sing to our Savior? Ooh, that's some challenge for me. I, I don't want to sit and stare at social, man. I want to stand and sing to my Savior. Oh, friends, what a challenge for us this morning. Well, I hope that you've been blessed. I hope that you can join us on our Zoom meeting in just a few moments. Um, But I want to close with this. Perhaps you're here this morning and you just tuned in, you found this sermon somehow. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Uh, Maybe you are uh, in a home and perhaps your your spouse is making you watch this, uh, but maybe there's something been stirring in and maybe you've been finding shelter in all the wrong places. But today I want to offer you a, a chance to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that he died for your sins, he rose again, he offers you hope and peace and love and joy and purpose that no one else can. If that's you, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Oh, Christians, this is a time for us all to pray. As we spend just a moment, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If that's you here, you're here. And your anthem, you're an anthem in the house and you're watching this video. And yet your heart's been stirred. I want to give you a chance to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He offers you forgiveness. He offers you eternal life. He offers you peace. He offers you the ability to let go of anxious thoughts and receive comfort and joy. If that's you here, I want you to pray this prayer in your heart. Say this, dear Jesus, I love you. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried and that you rose again. I believe you are God. I turn from my sin today and I turn toward you. Would you enter into my life? Would you be my savior? I believe I am saved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, if that was you here this morning for the first time receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, oh, I'd love to get to know you. Would you reach out? Would you email us? Uh, Go to our website. You can find out ways to do that. The rest of you, faith family, I love you so much. Hope to see you in a few moments at our Zoom meeting. God bless you. Hey, if thought I forgot, I want you guys stand up and and let's receive God's blessing this morning. Open your hands. Let's do it. You ready? Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you would abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. We'll see you next week.